I'm working on hardware version 3 of my productivity device, the Pocket Mage PDA, which was previously known as the E-Ink PDA in my other videos. And one of the big upgrades is a new OLED panel that's twice as long as the last one. By using this longer OLED, more information can be displayed on the bottom screen than before, creating a more seamless experience. This new OLED has the same vertical resolution as before, but exactly twice the horizontal resolution. Whereas the previous panel was 128 by 32, this new panel is 256 by 32 pixels, making its aspect ratio a whopping 8 to 1. While the proportions of the OLED are a bit ridiculous, it does allow for many more letters to be shown on the screen at once, which is a huge benefit for the user experience. This OLED also comes with some other benefits. It utilizes a standard ribbon cable size and is designed to work with these small ribbon cable connectors that I've used in other parts of the device. This means that they'll be able to be connected to the main board of the Pocket Mage without soldering them like you had to do in the previous version. By implementing this change, this brings the final number of user soldered components on the device down to zero, meaning that when the product ships as a kit, it will require absolutely no soldering whatsoever. Because this OLED is so long, it tends to be a more niche and less used OLED module. This unfortunately meant that there were no readily available breakout boards for the display, and I had to create my own in order to test the circuitry before implementing it on the final Pocket Mage itself. In this video, I'll go over my process for designing and specking the OLED for this project and how you may go about making a breakout board of your own. This OLED is one of a few major changes that I have been working on for V3, and if you want to follow along with some other project updates, you should consider joining the project Discord link below. With that said, let's also have a quick word from the sponsor and then get into my process for implementing this obscenely long OLED. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. JLC PCB provides easy, affordable, and reliable PCB and PCBA services for electronics engineers and hobbyists. Their easy to use ordering system and reliable output make them my primary choice for rapid prototyping and final production PCBs. The ordering process is as simple as uploading your Gerber files, setting your board specifications, and submitting the order. The pricing is reasonable and the production is fast with 24 hour PCB production. The PCBs that JLC makes are always great quality and have the expected electrical properties that were designed. Right now, JLC is offering 1-8 to eight layer PCBs for $2 made possible by their large-scale production facilities, which help to reduce their costs. You can also get $30 off your order with their new user coupons and utilize their top quality 6-layer PCBs starting at $5. Plus, add a 2-micro-inch Enig finish and buy in pad to your boards for no extra engineering fee. Thank you for listening to the sponsor and let's get back to the video. So what exactly does this breakout board do? Well, on the Pocket Mage PDA, we have three different voltage levels, 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and 12 volts. I, there is technically a fourth with the battery, but I'm leaving that out for simplicity. But at 3.3 volts, before we had our OLED um, and our microcontroller and you know our IO devices, stuff like that, but now our OLED has to be moved up to 12 volts. Um, because it's longer, it takes a little bit more power and the specification sheet says that this OLED now needs 12 volts, whereas the old one could run off three. So on 3.3 volts, now we just have the microcontroller and some IO stuff, things like that. And then at five volts, we have USB. And essentially this breakout board is used because we need to somehow move between these voltage levels. Before, we had ways to move from uh, 5 to 3.3 using a, what's called an, a low dropout voltage regulator. And we didn't ever need to move back up from 3 to 5 because the 5 volts is only used when the device is plugged into charge. But now we need some sort of way to get from 3.3 volts up to 12 volts to drive this display because most of the device runs on 3.3. So the way we do this is through something called a boost converter. The boost converter takes the 3.3 volts and converts it into 12 volts um, at the cost of some efficiency loss through, um, through, through current loss and stuff like that. But essentially that's why we need this board because this screen runs on 12 volts and we wanna be able to input 3.3 volts, as well as the fact that this screen does need some capacitors and stuff and some power supply circuitry to run it properly. So that's why we have the breakup board. Let me show you how I created it. So taking a look at the electrical schematic, you can see we have three main parts. This part here is the boost converter. This part is the wiring that's needed for the display. 
and then we just have a little connector to break out the pins. So let's start with the boost converter here. If I zoom in, you can see that we have what is typically, you know, a pretty industry standard boost converter module made by Texas Instruments. Let's pull up the data sheet. Okay, so I have the data sheet pulled up and we want this boost converter to do 3.3 volts on the input and 12 volts on the output because we need 12 to, to drive our display. And looking at the data sheet here, we get a little shout out for uh, application. But if we head to page 17 in the application circuits, TI actually provides a standard 3.3 volt to 12 volt supply circuit. So really all you have to do is copy their implementation and um, you can look through their spec capacitors and stuff like that and inductors and find a comparable one on JLC and then we can upload it that way. So really all I'm doing is using the data sheet to transfer this circuit onto mine and the application should work exactly the same. They've, they've tested this circuit and it works to create 12 volts from 3.3. So if we take a look now at the OLED circuit itself, we essentially have a really long connector, 26 pins long. And this connector is the ribbon cable connector that's, you know, hooks up to the OLED to drive it. Most of what this is is grounding for a lot of the pins. Um, there's also some sort of setting resistor here and a lot of decoupling capacitors for the 3.3 volt line and the 12 volt line as well as some breakouts for I squared C pins, uh, the serial data and serial clock and reset. Also, I should mention that we have pull-ups that are 10K on each of the SDA and SCL pins, which are necessary for I squared C. But if we pull up the data sheet for the screen here, we can see a really nice implementation circuit as well. And this really goes to show like most of the data sheets that you find for parts will have an application circuit, which makes it really easy to implement into your own boards. So essentially all I've done here is work off of the application circuit again, um, using what they've done for the I squared C interface mode, make sure you have the correct application. But I've just worked off of this and created my own circuit off of theirs using some parts that I found on JLC. Um, in including this connector and the different capacitors and stuff like that. And finally, this connector simply breaks out the main pins that we need, SDA, SCL, reset, and then power. And from this design, I created a circuit board, just laying out the components. They also usually include a optimal layout, especially for power electronics. So TI did include an example circuit um, on the PCB level of how you should implement this boost converter so that you get the optimal you know heat dissipation and power efficiency and stuff like that but creating the circuit was pretty simple you essentially just hook stuff up where it's supposed to go keycad makes this really easy and then you can turn that into your gerber file and your 3d model and stuff like that and send it to jlc for production okay now essentially what i've done is just soldered a header onto this well header on the pcb and I've put it in the breadboard and hooked it up to this ESP32 dev module. Uh, ground to ground, 3.3 volts to 3.3 volts on the dev module, and then the rest of the pins are just GPIO. So if I plug this in here, we can test to make sure the boost circuit has actually produced 12 volts. So I'm gonna put the black probe here on ground. The USB sheaths are grounded, and then I'll put this on the 12 volt output. And yeah, we're getting 12.04 volts, so that's good. So now I've unplugged it and I'll put the OLED in and we'll test if it works. So the reason I tested the voltage before I put the OLED in here is because I wanna make sure that we're not producing too much because we could potentially destroy the OLED and have to buy a new one, which would kind of suck. Well, now that we know the voltage is correct, we can plug this in. And we can see that we're getting, you know, some things on the screen. I've added a program on here that just does some random tests, uh, just some bars coming across and then some text and then kind of a on off flashing refresh as well. So we have it working. Our driver board is working properly and it's driving our OLED and it seems to be pretty bright and it works as intended. Let me show you how I did this code. 
All right, so taking a quick look through this code, I am using Arduino IDE just because it's super easy to prototype, but we're just essentially using the U8G2 library, which is a library that's used to control a bunch of different LCDs and OLEDs and stuff. And very nicely, they already have an implementation for the SSD 1326, which is the wide OLED panel that I'm using. So I simply set it up uh, defining the rotation as zero, so that means it's not rotated at all. I set a reset button, IO45, and then I set my SCL and SCA pins, and those are defined up here. For the setup, it's pretty simple as well. You just start the software I squared C, which is the wire library that I've also included up here. Define your SDA and SCL, and we're using one megahertz as the frequency. And then we set the bus clock also to one megahertz for UHG2, and then start the OLED here. In the loop, this is where I'm doing all of those kind of test sequences. This first one is that uh, bar that kind of goes from left to right, and we have a small delay. And then we're doing kind of the bar from right to left, kind of the opposite of what we did before, another small delay. And then this prints this string letter by letter across the screen. So we've just put very long OLED, three exclamation points on the screen letter by letter. And then after a short delay, um, this is that flashing test at the end. So pretty simple. The setup for the screen should not be too hard to incorporate in the code that already exists. So the screen is almost a drop-in replacement. I might have to edit a few things in the code side just to change how things are rendered on the OLED. But other than that, it should be pretty easy. Anyway, that's about it for this video. As always, thank you for watching and special thanks to my Patreon supporters and have a good day.